What's going on guys? So this is a new series that I'm starting. A full week of my training laid out for you, every single thing that I do with great detail, and I'm gonna coach you through the entire process. Now I run what's known as a push-pull legs split. You have a push day, a pull day, and a leg day, and you repeat it twice throughout the week. I train seven days per week. Now is that optimal? No, it's not. Y'all probably shouldn't be in the gym seven days per week. But I know some of you guys are hard-headed like me and addicted to the gym, so this is at least an intelligently laid out template for you to follow that'll allow you to make progress and you're not gonna feel like death. Now ideally, if you wanna build muscle, you should probably be training anywhere between four and maybe six days per week. Don't worry, I'll provide you with some very simple program modifications to help this seven day a week program fit that four to six day a week program mold. It's really simple. Now, I don't watch a whole lot of YouTube, but I do know one thing. I hate YouTube videos that go on for forever. You don't even know the guy. He's talking about stuff you don't even care about. You have to wade through all this crap information in order to find out what you do care about. Then you just get annoyed and frustrated and click on a shorter video. This is already going on a little longer than I like. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're starting off with dumbbell bench press, and this is such a great movement, obviously, for the middle portion of the chest. This is gonna target the chest in its lengthened position, meaning the press is most difficult down here to sort of the mid-range, and as you get up past the mid-range, it gets a little bit easier. Muscles typically grow or get a, best, a better stimulus for growth when they're trained in the lengthened position. So that's why I like to prioritize those in my training first. So we're going to start off with the dumbbell bench, gradually working up set by set until we get to a weight that really challenges us at about eight repetitions. From there we're going to go up so that we're limited to just six repetitions by the final set. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to move the weight upward with explosiveness A to B as quickly as I can. And on the way down, I'm like actively contracting and resisting the weight down so that there's at least some control in the movement. You don't ever want to let the weight just go Whoa. Okay, you're gonna lose the tension. Try keeping your elbows tucked in a little bit more, right here. A neutral grip dumbbell bench, if you will. That's gonna be better for lining up the arm and pec fibers so that the pecs are actually pressing the weight up. super important. I cannot express to you how important resting long enough between your sets is. For this, this is my probably my most intense movement of the day. That's why I'm leading off with it. I'm resting at least three and a half to four minutes between each set because each set that I do, I want to recruit as much muscle as I possibly can. And that's going to happen when the muscle is actually being pushed as hard as it can be pushed or really close to it. You're going to be able to do that better if you give your chance, your muscles a chance to fully recover between each set. So don't be doing 60 second rest periods, even 90 second rest periods for a movement like this is not enough. For compound movements, my general rule of thumb, three minutes at least, four to five minutes is probably best. You might not have to do five minutes, but four is golden. When you do isolations, single joint movements, you may be able to get away with 90 seconds, two minutes or so, shorter rest periods is okay, but just keep that in mind, don't short your rest. So we're done with the dumbbell bench press, which again, targeted the middle fibers of the chest more in the lengthened position. So now we're gonna target the middle fibers of the chest in the more shortened position, which means it has got the most tension and is the most difficult at the very end of the movement. So we're gonna do what's known as a cable press around. I'm doing it on this instead of just standing like in front of a cable machine because this will help me provide a little bit of stability. I get to rest my hips up into the machine itself, plant myself here, nice wide stance here, and I press just like that. Now notice, my body is sort of angled a little bit this way, not here. Okay, not forward, but a little bit like a 30 degree angle. So here I'm pressing around trying to push the heel of my hand as far away from me and across my body as I possibly can. I'm going to place the tension right here. You'll notice big contraction here. You can see I'm going to be holding the very end range of motion for about one second just to own that position, know that I'm there, have the tension on the shortened position for a little bit longer, kind of an isometric contraction. And uh, yeah. Okay, 
so that does it for the middle portions, um, the sternal fibers of the pecs here. We're gonna be moving to the costal fibers, the sternocostal fibers down here. And what we're gonna be doing for that are dips with a nice, slow, controlled negative and a powerful press to the top. So if you want this to really be focused on the pecs, you wanna face your chest, your torso to the ground itself. I'll show you how. A lot of times you'll do dips just like this, right? That's fine. Really gonna involve a lot of the shoulder and the triceps. But if you kick your hips back like this and then face your torso to the ground, you see the difference. Here to there. Boom, pressing up to the top. Completely different ball game. That's gonna do it as far as the two fiber orientations of the pecs that we're working on today, the middle and the lower. We're not really focused on the upper clavicular head of the chest today. That's because on the second day of the week, I focus in more on this region of the chest. So this is gonna hit us really hard and it's gonna lead us into the tricep work. It's called a Kaz Press. Popularized by the strongest man in the world at the time, Bill Kazmaier. You can load this up with a good amount of weight and perform it on a decline bench, locking your shoulders into position, and just imagine that you're moving about the elbow. So it's just like this. A little movement right here. Almost all the way down to the chest, elbows out to the side, everything like it's locked into position here, and just extending. right here. What we're gonna do is prop the middle of your back up on the top of the bench for some good stability. And what I like to think of doing is keeping my rib cage kind of tucked down, engaging my abs, not being all up here. Tucked down with your elbows allowed to flare out. Your elbows don't have to be in here when you're training your triceps. They can flare out at about a 30 degree angle as you extend and be just fine. It's called scaption. At about a 30 degree angle is where everything lines up very nicely with the shoulder blades. Everything's gonna be nice and happy. Triceps are gonna be in alignment. Shoulders are gonna feel good. So don't try to unnaturally keep everything tucked into here. It's all right. Up and control down for one or two seconds. Up, nice and powerful. standing. If you don't want to haul over a bench like this, which can be a pain in the butt, especially in a crowded gym, you can do it standing. However, I usually just do this out of convenience. It's just not quite as stable and I have to focus on controlling my entire body. I got to worry about all this stuff down here that's going on versus just being able to sit down, keep everything nice and stable and oh, focus on the triceps themselves. Final exercise, turning the triceps in the fully shortened position going to be doing a single arm cable extension, kind of across the body a little bit. See the cables coming across my body at about a 30 to 45 degree angle this way. It's going to line up well with the fibers of the triceps and the scapula, everything in line this way. I'm thinking about keeping my elbow perfectly stable right at my side, protecting my armpit. Right here, that's a good cue, like you're smashing everything right here and extending all the way down as far as you possibly can. Boom, just like this. I'm doing eight to 12 repetitions, pushing down as quickly as I can, under control with good form, holding the bottom for one second in that fully contracted position, and then resisting up for about two, maybe three seconds, really feeling that resistance on the way up. training 
session chest and triceps taken care of. Hope you all got some value out of this, some new movements, and a better understanding of how to target each area of the chest and maybe some rhyme and reason. This chest day is going to pair up very nicely with the second chest and tricep day that we have later in this series. Stay tuned for that. Catch y'all later. Train alongside me in my training app where I provide all of my exact weekly workouts in immense detail. You can follow this plan exactly as it's written or you can do what some people do and just use it as a reference to help construct their own workouts. However you choose to use it, my workouts and coaching are going to be there for you. I take care of the planning. All you have to do is show up. All of us on the app put in the work every week and we'd love to have you be a part of it. So if you'd like to join us, sign up through the website myliftfitness.com. It'll walk you through the process of setting up your profile and then you'll be able to log in through the app.